Sarah gave you the wink. Has <laughs> man, how's Miss Julie doing? I, I saw her Facebook post yesterday yeah. about the buzzers at your house. I started to make a smart comment. I said, nah. Yeah. She might not be no, excused this morning. I got him working. I got him working. <laughs> really? <laughs> I wouldn't miss it. Oh, I'm sorry. I like yeah, I'm sorry. I'd be too sad. Been upset about that. Don't get me six hundred dollars. I understand. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Board of County Commissioners meeting for June 25th, 2019. Thank you for coming. I'd like to begin our meeting by asking uh, Pastor Juan Sanchez with Advanced Ministry Missionaries uh, to come forward to deliver our invocation. And Commissioner Turner will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for another day that you have given us, Lord. Thank you for, um, Father, um, thought about us this morning. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you, Lord, Father, and, and to do your will. Father, we pray this morning that, um, Father, this man and woman, that they will continue uh, to lead our county, Father, in wisdom and love, Lord. Father, we pray that you give them the strength that they need, Father. We pray that you um, you bless their family, Father. And we, you pray, we pray, Father, that you prosper them in everything we, they do, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Thank you, Pastor Sanchez, and thank you, Commissioner Turner. <clears throat> Commissioners, we see on our agenda item number two, approval of minutes. Mr. I Chairman, I move approval. approval. I'll move for a second. Okay, we've got a proper motion by Commissioner Harvey and a proper second by Commissioner Goddard. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving down to, we have an addendum to the, um, to the agenda. It would be item 2B. And uh, this time I'd like to um, recognize and ask Mr. Chris Doolin, President of Doolin and Associates, uh, to come forward with a small county coalition. Um, and he has a presentation that he'd like to, a couple of them that he'd like to make. And I can say um, my brother, uh, and I know Bobby does, my brother had a great relationship with Chris Doolin when he was in Tallahassee. And it didn't take me long to figure out who Chris Doolin was uh, after I got elected, I'm sure Buddy and all the commissioners up here, uh, because he gets in contact with you and uh, once you get, get involved. So anyway, Chris, thank you for coming. And well, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Uh, item 2B or not to be. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You know, as far as trying to figure out who I am, uh, I had that conversation with my wife just yesterday. Who, you know, who I am. But uh, let me not play around too much. First of all, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I did drive over this morning. It was uh, pretty interesting, actually. You have time to reflect and, and look at the natural environment. And I mean, it was all uh, very, very pleasant. Uh, heard a nice uh, radio presentation, uh, Mr. Harvey inviting uh, uh, folks to participate in, 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 their, in their governmental process. Um, I'm also really, uh, I, I do have you know, some brief remarks. and. The extemporaneous stuff will probably be more lengthy, but uh, you know Putnam County has has been extremely uh, special uh, for uh, for our I say our rural Florida school boards uh, as well as county commissions. You you your your elected leaders oftentimes you know you're on the hot seat and you get all the calls and you they folks see you in the grocery store unlike in the urban areas where you know you, you don't have a face you have a face and they can get to you and so but um, this community has been extremely involved I mean and, and not only that you have some outstanding organizations here the Northeast Florida Education Consortium Dr. Winnack formerly uh, Robert Robert Smith they provide 
exemplary services to uh, help deliver um, educational policy and assist these smaller areas uh, with more complex and uh, data analysis and leadership. And Dr. Winneck is here. I appreciate him being here. There are other local officials that have been affiliated with the Small County Coalition. Linda Myers, uh, currently your tax collector, was the chair. Brad Purcell, uh, formerly commissioner, was a chairman. Uh, Kenny Eubanks was uh, an incoming vice chairman, and there were some changes made, and, and so be it. But the fact is that this community has always been extremely involved, and, uh, and you continue to be. So for that, I just want to say thank you. Um, the Small County Coalition, which you participated in, you were one of our original members, is an alliance of 39 counties in the state of Florida, commissions. It's four commissions, and it's from rural and small counties. Our primary mission is to uh, address legislative issues, work with state agencies to ensure that there is a rural perspective in their thinking and in their delivery. You know, rural is an interesting name or an interesting word. Everybody likes to use it and, oh, yeah, my father was raised on a farm or, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, but the real essence of rural and the difficulties that we have are extreme. And it's much more than talking about window dressing. I mean, it is, it is significant. So <clears throat> your commission, your school officials have been extremely active. Um, you know, Commissioner Harvey working with the uh, Florida Association of Counties serving as the Rural Caucus. Now, uh, with the Florida Association of Counties, which, which we encourage small counties to participate in. I mean, it's not just about the small county coalition driving a legislative agenda. We have to infiltrate or embed ourselves in virtually every um, organizational structure, whether it's your regional planning council, whether it's your rural uh, economic development organization, whether it's, you know, we want our leadership, elected leadership participating, in, 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 and I want to thank all of you for, for doing that. Um, it's no secret that rural communities are struggling. Uh, internet access, slow or no job growth. This is not just in Florida. This is around the country, but it's, it's consistent in Florida. Limited fiscal capacity, property off the rolls, um, uh, insufficient as we address our water issues, septic tanks and, and wastewater uh, infrastructure, access to health care. Um, and when there's a natural disaster, there is an inherent uh, disproportionate impact in terms of recovery and response. And so these are the challenges that we, that we face, all, all of us face to a different degree. And so our coalition was started back in, uh, in uh, I, really about 1989. It followed on the heels of the Small School District Consortium, which was started in 1983, both same footprint, same legislators. But uh, it was started to focus with the agencies protect high-valued programs. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, your tax base is, is, is limited. There are substantial programs at the state level, safety net programs, and, I, and I'll talk about that in a second. You know, focusing on the digital divide. You as a commission are not going to be the sole leader in providing the broadband, but can we encourage those providers working with us, and how can we uh, access the federal government as they continue to move in that regard so that we continue to move toward the goal line. And uh, we're not talking about additional regulation, additional cost of, by local government, but that is a major issue. Um, you know, mit mitigating the impact of, of mandates, the, the rural water issues, uh, rural economic development. So over the years, um, <coughs> our legislators, our rural legislators, these coalitions in, uh, are to up your game from a standpoint of how are we addressing these issues in, in Tallahassee. But your legislators, when they come up to Tallahassee, and you've had some great ones, but, but think about it. There's 40 senators. 14 of those districts represent a small county or a portion of a small county. That's significant, okay? Of 120 House members, 30 of those districts, maybe a little more, depending on the issue, 30 uh, are, are, are from, a, from a rural area. And they have worked together over the years to create that safety net of programs. Putnam County has had great legislators. I mean, you really, they really have been quite
quite something. Two come to my mind, just jump out. One is Kelly Smith. I mean, from a transportation standpoint and, and some of the initial legislation. Another one is, is, is former Representative Joe Pickens. And uh, those two, uh, both and others, uh, working closely uh, with uh, other legislators and, and us to, to help create these programs. The Rural Economic Development Initiative was not in place. It was created, and Representative Pickens was very much a part of that. The small county road programs, there's two of them, the small county outreach and the small county uh, uh, road assistance program. Those did not exist. Uh, Senator Kirkpatrick was, and he represented a portion of his district at time over, <coughs> over time. So, so he was, and it was in your former or your, yeah, your former uh, county commission office and, and um, meeting room, and this is, this is nice, um, and, and it's appropriate, it's fine, um, but in the former commission room, um, Governor Bush signed the fiscally constrained legislation that provides a, a great deal of money, and again, Representative Pickens carried the water on that, and, uh, and so that was, that was great. Um, this past session, and I'll get to the reason I'm here in a, in a sec, this past legislative session was significant for a couple reasons. One, it went smoothly. Okay? It was smooth. We had a new governor. We had a new Senate president. We had a new speaker. There was a significant budget, largest ever, and programs for rural were funded. But it did go smoothly, and you have to credit Governor DeSantis and his experience in the legislative process. He made his priorities clear, but he worked in a collaborative way with the legislative process, a former legislator, understanding the process. So it, you have to give him a lot of credit. Speaker, uh, President Galvano, uh, over the years, President Galvano was the go-to guy. If you had a big problem that had to be addressed, generally, Galvano was going to be in the middle of it. So that, and, uh, you know, and then uh, Speaker Gal, uh, Oliva. Uh, and uh, so the three of them, um, it, it really went well. Now, how did you fare? Uh, you fared pretty well. Uh, I'm just staying outside looking in. Your county, with your help and your advocacy on these programs, received in excess of 115 million dollars in state funds, program money, project money that are not paid by the citizens of this county other than what they pay for the rest that others pay. 115 million roads, funding for education, uh, solid waste, libraries, emergency management, and the fiscally constrained program provides you know, over about 60 million, but you get a two to three million out of that. And your legislators, Representative Bobby Payne and uh, Senator Keith Perry, unfortunately, uh, Senator Perry had, had his mother is, is, had, had a, 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 a situation where he could not be here today, but they consistently not only support, but lead <coughs> on behalf of rural Florida. And, uh, in, in, you know, what happens good in the session for us is good and better because of these guys. Mm -hmm. What happens bad is not as bad as it would be because of these guys. They're working to guide the session, and that's really all we can ask is to do your best, and they do far greater than uh, what, uh, you know, it's just, it's just fantastic. And in a moment, Representative Payne, um, and, uh, you know, we're going to do a recognition of you specifically and uh, for your leadership. Now, last year was another significant, uh, there was another significant activity. Uh, it was a big deal uh, in the context of the process. May not seem to be, but absolutely in my, I've been doing this for about 40 years. It's a very big deal. And for years, it didn't happen because no one really stepped up and nobody was operational behind this. And uh, at the urging of Representative Payne, you, this commission and your neighbors pulled together an inaugural rural days in the legislature. Now at his urging, uh, and it was Representative Payne, and he probably got some urging from some former elected officials that 
has-beens, but now he's the guy doing it. <laughs> um, at his urging, um, with support from elected officials and business leaders in Putnam, Baker, Bradford, Union, Keystone Heights, and other areas, you pulled off a successful activity uh, to bring attention to rural. One of the major challenges, and why am I here telling you guys this? Because you were part of an overall, there were a lot of folks involved. But one of the major things that you have to have for something to be successful in Tallahassee is food. <laughs> just saying. And with the new laws, you have to feed everybody. You can't just, I remember the days you could take pizza and other stuff into the legislator's offices. You can't do that anymore. So you got to provide food. <clears throat> And food is one of the toughest parts of a function. And uh, in the audience, uh, Patricia Evans from Capital City and, and the Bradford County Economic, they were very involved. And I know she was relieved, as was Representative Payne, to have you guys, somebody step up and say, we'll do it. Now, why is this special? Why are you special? You guys, from a coalition standpoint, are a testament to collaboration and cooperation. Now, some people may not, what? You know, no. You guys, from my perspective, and I watch a lot of commissions as they change over <coughs> the years. Your involvement in this was a testament to collaboration and cooperation. I've never seen, I've never seen a group of elected officials from one board, their wives, and their kids work <laughs> as hard cooking and serving food, catfish, hush puppies, and coleslaw to over 1,000 people in an hour. Unbelievable. You were great. Matt Buckles played music. David Buckles, school board member. Uh, you even brought this little ambassador uh, who, whose energy rivals the ever-ready rabbit. I think his name is Liam. <laughs> yeah. Liam. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, he was the main greeter, I'll tell you, he's, he, was, he was special. And the efforts uh, using the Crescent City Rotary Cooker were, were really the underpinning of a successful day. Uh, it was hard work, you guys did a great job, and on behalf of the Small County Coalition, and I'm not stepping on anyone's toes by calling you guys out, I hope, because everybody played a part. Uh, we are provide, you know, we would like to recognize the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners for outstanding service for leadership and support for Rural Days inaugural event and effective <coughs> participation in the Small County Coalition. So I would like to present that. I would also, on the heels of this, uh, present uh, Representative Payne. And I'll try to make this quick so people can take picture with a legislative appreciation for leadership and support on issues critical to local governments. Representative Payne, you are absolutely. <laughs> uh, so what we ought to do now is have some pictures. And, yeah, Chris, uh, um, Patricia, I'm like glad you came up, and also um, President Joe Pickens, if you would come forward, uh, also part of this, and um, Miss Marianne Braddock. Uh, Marianne was one of the Rotarians that uh, traveled all the way to Tallahassee and um, worked tirelessly <laughs> and, uh, and then had work to do when she got back home. So she's representing the Rotary Club. And uh, Chris, thank you for the uh, recognition, and um, hopefully, Representative Payne will say a few words, and then I uh, hope everybody will say a few words, and then we'll take some pictures. Yeah. pictures. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, because it really was a great event, and uh, I want to thank Administrator Suggs because I know he was involved uh, also <coughs> in the planning stages, and also uh, Commissioner Goddard, I believe he said on that uh, planning board, and I just appreciate all the extra efforts. Um, and we did work well together. It was a, uh, Dana Jones um, who could not be here. She's the president of the Chamber of Commerce said that she had a couple of people ask them where they got the catering crew to serve the fish. <laughs> and she said, that's our five elected officials and uh, their wives and one of their um, children. And um, they remarked, wow, we couldn't get our commissioners to work together like that. <laughs> so, but it was fun, so thank you.
Representative Payne. Thank you, uh, Chair. And, and Chris, thank you for being here today, taking the time to drive down and, and recognize the effort, recognize this community and this county uh, with regard to uh, the things that we do in rural Florida. Uh, the vision that we've had, that I've had for a few years, and I certainly bounce that off of uh, former Representative Pickens and others, is to elevate the uh, positions of rural counties. And I will say that uh, that was a vision, but those involved, Patricia, thank you so much for, I'll call her the Ever Ready Bunny. She's uh, full of energy. Joe, Joe and I, and, and she met a few times uh, to discuss rural county days. But then the, the synergy and the relationship building that, that took place uh, involved with that, uh, the, the, the Crescent City Rotary Club, so many others that got involved um, within the last three to four months uh, made that day a special day for all of us. I'm honored and proud of the fact that uh, we had such a great turnout, cl served close to a thousand mills. And, and so Chris uh, did uh, eloquently say that it is important for staff members in Tallahassee don't make a lot of money to find a good mill, and they found a good mill that day, even to the extent that our um, member services who prepare a lot of mills for us were able to receive a mill, and um, they were very thankful to have a to have a North Florida fresh fish cooked <laughs> Cook Mill, so they were happy about that. But I can't say enough about the uh, efforts and relationship building that we have uh, fulfilled and continue to fill and the synergy that we'll build upon for this and future years. Again, elevating the needs of rural communities, elevating the needs of our district initially, Putnam County being um, the center of that because I live here, but certainly not uh, downplaying the, the, the roles of Bradford and Union and Keystone. So uh, we had 10 additional legislators show up for the for the reception that night, good friends, future speaker, Senator Perry there was there, but uh, also my, my future speaker roommate, Paul Renner. In fact, I just got off the phone with him. So he is very engaged and very uh, involved in what we're doing in Northeast Florida and will continue to be a part of the leadership that we'll see in the House with Senator Bradley, Senator Cummings. Um, we have great future ahead of us as far as um, uh, lifting the, and elevating the needs of rural communities. So thank you for the day. Thank you for this, Chris. I appreciate you driving down and presenting this to me. Um, thank all of you, Representative Pickens. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Patricia, would you say a few words? And even Marianne and, and definitely President Pickens. Well, I was supposed to be here for pictures, but um, thank you. I mean, that's, I know I've said it in emails. I've not been able to come over, unfortunately, to say it in person. So I'm so glad Chris arranged this day to, to be able to do this. Thank you. Um, when Representative Payne and Mr. Pickens and I sat down in that very first meeting, it was deer in the headlights. It seemed like an event that how in the world are we ever going to pull this together? There are a couple of months. I've got a few more gray hairs than I had when I began that event. But once it got rolling, y'all saw the vision, y'all embraced it. I believe the words we heard was cooperation and collaboration. <clears throat> there was no competition between the different communities, and that was inspiring for me. You know, young girl from South Georgia moving to Florida, you don't always see that. We saw nothing but cooperation. And so thank you very much. We um, reached out to some friends. I was in Tallahassee for 15 years before I relocated to cover Bradford and Clay counties. And I reached out to them when we had the event on the calendar. Their first thing they said, we said, oh, we've got that date circled. I'm like, well, why do you have it circled? They're like, we haven't had fried fish in Tallahassee in <laughs> years. We will all be there. Everybody is looking forward to it. And they did, they showed up. So we had the pressure on us. We knew that we were gonna have a big crowd. Y'all handled it marvelously. The Crescent City cooking team, oh my gosh, I've never seen an operation like that. I bank many restaurants from small mom and pops to huge ones. I've never seen an operation like that. That's kudos, it was amazing. And if that hadn't have happened, the event would not have been as successful. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Patricia. Marianne, you want to say anything? We'll put you on the spot, but um. well, I can say this on behalf of Rotary Club of Crescent City, we were delighted to be invited to be a part of showcasing Putnam County, um, to be able to show the world what a wonderful place we live in is an awesome opportunity, and we look forward to the next time. Good, yeah. very good, Marianne. Yeah.
I knew you wasn't going to pass up a shot. I'm actually going to be <laughs> remarkably brief for me, which is still relatively lengthy, but um, <laughs> I've already had my comments. I, I, I think, said almost exactly what Chris did a month or two ago when I um, thanked you all for coming together and, and doing what you did. And it's nice to have somebody else come down and confirm that. One person, I think almost everybody uh, has been thanked at one time or another, but I don't think we've thanked Wayne McLean. Uh, and he certainly was in every meeting that we were in, Buddy, um, and, and helped pull things together, including Matt Buckles. But really, anything else, anything that we needed that wasn't provided for, Wayne McLean was perfectly willing to um, offer that um, he would help. So uh, I do want to say again that it really was remarkable watching all of you come together. Um, we don't always agree on a lot of things, but I think that what impressed me the most is maybe we can argue and disagree when we're here at home, but when we leave the county, we're, we're one county and we're a unified group, and I think that y'all demonstrated that by your actions, I think more than anything I've ever seen, and obviously it was recognized by the folks in Tallahassee. I've said this also, and one of the reasons that I'm so appreciative of Bobby Payne is, especially given that gap that we had for eight years between my term and Bobby's term, is it's always nice to watch somebody follow you and do a better job than you did. It's what you hope for, um, is that your successor will be better than you because that means that they're, the county's being served even more and certainly Bobby Payne has done that in his first three years and we should all be really excited about what's going to happen in the next five or 13 depending on what Bobby decides to do after his house term um, is over. I also said to you and I'll close with this I could have done this I was there eight years I could have done this and I didn't do it, you know, I didn't get around to it, but Bobby Payne did, and so I felt it was important for me to be a part of making it happen since, since I could have done it and I didn't. And Chris Doolin is, you know, he's a lot of things, but one of them is he's, he's like a bad penny, you know, it just shows up <laughs> yeah, everywhere. <laughs> but when you get to Tallahassee, you really don't know much, and that's a lesson actually that many legislators should learn. Is it just because you got elected doesn't mean you know everything about everything? That's right. Well, one of the greatest resources that I had, and there were several, um, was Wes Larson. And Wes Larson helped me more than you could ever imagine, especially on the rural, the rural county issues. But I have a rotary speech that I was giving when I was in the legislature that shocked the world because the title was Lobbyists or People Too. Well, Chris Doolin is the reason why, one of the reasons why I was, I, I thought it was important to speak to people about, you know, lobbyists play an important role. And there are good ones and there are bad ones. Just like lawyers and college presidents and <laughs> auto parts store owners. You know? so, <laughs> but Chris Doolin is one of the very best ones. Um, the fact that his persistence can occasionally be aggravating um, doesn't mean that he's not one of the most effective advocates, lobbyists, um, that there are in Tallahassee because of his knowledge of, of both schools and, and counties, but his persistence and his care, he, he really cares. Uh, he cares about his constituents. They are not just a check. Right. And I, I can tell you, and Bobby will echo that, to, there are many lobbyists where you are just the check of the day, um, but Chris Doolin lives what what we all live in, right. in rural Florida and Putnam County. So, Chris, thanks for coming down and recognizing Bobby, and thank you all for indulging me and, and us in, um, in having this time together. Just before you say anything, I just want to thank you so much for all you do and, and uh, coming down to present all the way from Tallahassee to um, present this to us and to uh, Representative Payne. And I... Uh, forgot that um, Senator Perry's mother is ill, so if you keep him and his family in your prayers are for honoring Senator Perry, too. So thank you, Chris. I just wanted to close. Number one, thank you very much, and enough said about all that. I mean, but to Patricia, you may have gotten a few gray hairs, but it's not the end of the world. <laughs> 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 all right, let's take some pictures. If we hey, one last thing. Uh, Patricia, you might want to know that there's one of the dates for the 
uh, rural days in January, I believe, of 2000 or 2020. Uh, Calvin Hare, who's our quarterback, could not be there. So that particular day would be Larry Harvey or Bradford County Barbecue. Um, so the other day we could do the catfish. So Well, let me just tell you, commissioners, uh, because Patricia has an email from me that volunteered y'all to cook barbecue. I, many don't remember that before we settled on fish, Commissioner Harvey had already agreed, I'm sure assisted by Commissioner Rawls, I, they apparently are um, a, a cooking tag team, had already agreed to do barbecue. And so there is an email where I already volunteered y'all to do barbecue on that day, if that's the day that, um, that's being chosen. And so um, th thank you for that. And um, <coughs> you're, you've been voluntold. So, so, <laughs> so what you say, we're, we're in either way, right? Okay, all right, thank you. Let's give one more round of applause. We'll get some pictures. Mr. Chairman, may I have a point of privilege for a second? Yes, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you. Um, Representative Pickens, I, I enlist a lot of people in my barbecue, so um, it could be you the next time, actually, to be my partner, believe me. <laughs> and Chris, before you leave, uh, Chris Doolin, may I have your attention? I wanna, I wanna say something about Chris. When I first got elected or appointed by the governor, I was really, really unaware of what I was getting into. And um, Chris really kind of walked me through the minefield. And I would encourage anyone who gets elected um, to any office in this state to look Chris up because Chris will help you uh, navigate, find partners for you to hook you up with. Because um, what you don't know is what you don't know, and you don't know it and um, you think you know it and you don't know and uh, chris has been a big advocate of mine and big help uh, chris and i talk early in the morning late at night text each other a lot during the day uh, we bounce ideas off of each other and in this business there's nothing new uh, other counties go through the same problems we go through but chris is a huge asset for us and uh, i don't know what this county would do without someone like chris doolin helping us get through it. And uh, Chris, I just wanna say, you become a special friend of mine, and uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for allowing me that time to, to thank Chris publicly for saying that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey.
Hey, before we move on to public comment, I would like to um, uh, welcome uh, the Honorable Don Holmes uh, with the law firm of Holmes and Young, and uh, he's our legal counsel for today. So, Don, welcome. Uh, also, Mr. Kenny Downs is sitting in for the Honorable Tim Smith. Uh, Mr. Downs, uh, recognize John Shipley with the uh, Palaka Daily News. Uh, Ms. Linda Myers, former county commissioner and current tax collector, and uh, Ms. Laura France with the Putnam County School System, and I'll recognize Mr. Mason DeLoach, uh, son of Gator De Sheriff Gator DeLoach. Mason, stand up so everybody can see how tall you're getting. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move forward with uh, agenda item three, public comment. This portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It is not reasonable to suspect the board will be engaged in debate or deliberation about matters in which it had no prior information as part of the agenda. Uh, when you come to the podium, please state your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, we prefer you to fill out a public comment card, which are found at the entrance and the exit of our building. And if you'll give them to um, Sarah <coughs> Oliver to my left, to your right, <laughs> and we'll ask for the first um, public comment, Ms. Cheryl Robinson. If you please come forward. Good morning. My name is Cheryl Robinson, and my address is 13133 Rivergate Court, Jacksonville, Florida. And my concerns I um, would prefer not to address today publicly, but I was unable to be added to the agenda. And I sent an email that I had requested would go to the Board of Commissioners rather than be here today. But if you would like me to proceed, then I would be glad to. So if well, you Ms. want Robinson. to defer this or if you'd rather I address it publicly, I'm able to do both. Okay, if you feel you want to, maybe we're going to limit you to right around three minutes. If it's something lengthy, um, uh, it, this has to do, I believe, with maybe one of the properties that you purchased. Yes, sir. County. And I mean, I, does this go to a workshop, or we need to just? <laughs> I had originally asked for it to be um, added to the agenda or in, or in another meeting where I sent an email that was asked to be sent to the, all of the commissioners because I don't feel that this matter can be discussed in three minutes. But at the same time, it's very important to me as a citizen. And I love Pub Putnam County. I've um, owned property here and was trying to purchase a property for retirement and ran into problems unforeseen until Mr. Gullett did a title search. And now it's out of my reach financially because of the additional legal ex concerns and expenses. So I um, <coughs> can proceed, but I would—I just don't think I can handle it in three minutes. Yeah, I don't—I don't think so either. Um, Administrator Suggs, I mean, is this something that would be appropriate to put, you know, on the agenda next time or on the workshop? Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, at the last workshop, we had a brief discussion about this issue already. It was the uh, direction of the. Uh, County Commission for us to uh, meet with Ms. Robinson, and we did that that afternoon. Uh, the uh, commission, uh, it was the commission's stance at that time that we were going to accept all bids as is, and that was the conversation that we had with Ms. Robinson. Ms. Robinson uh, requested an opportunity to uh, once again bring this to the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, the reason why it was an agenda to item <coughs> is we'd already had discussion, a decision had already been made. And if she would like to come before the County Commission of Public Comment section, she's willing, she's welcome to do so as that's her, her right. Uh, but a decision by this Board of County Commissioners was made that day, and that decision was relayed to Ms. Robinson. Okay, and that's you clarify what I thought uh, we did, that we have made a decision uh, on that, and you had a meeting with staff and I'm sure legal counsel um, that we had made our decision and I, that we're going to stand firm on that. Is that correct, Commissioners? Yes, okay. that's right. Well, if that, if, with that said, then I would like to publicly, um, as a last resort, plead my case because the meeting, um, I also sent a follow-up email regarding that email, um, that meeting, and some concerns that I had regarding the bid, which I don't care to discuss publicly right now. 
but I feel as though that there um, that I um, depleted my savings I am and I took out a loan for this property and I had every intention of working on this property for my retirement and that I can prove all of that I took out a loan the money's in the bank I I wasn't a frivolous buyer I did this in the intent to try to get find an affordable home in a county that I already own property in and uh, want to retire in and that I um, really appreciate appreciate you and because I am a ex government employee I had to leave my government career due to a heart aneurysm and a um, severe scoliosis in my back I could no longer sit or do much and um, this property was intended to be my retirement home however when I went to do a title search I found that I could not take clean possession of this property and only because of that am I asking for um, the exception, which other exceptions have been made on this bid to others, um, that my deposit be refunded so I can participate in your next round of bids and find a property that is suitable, that is does have a clean tie it, title. I have spoke with an attorney and it will take me over $3,000 minimum to start the quiet title process and it could get very lengthy and expensive if someone steps forward and as a disabled single mom who worked on a modest salary as you know as government um, I don't have that kind of money to go further with this property and it was not my intention to ever not proceed with the property but these were unforeseen legal matters um, that I tried to explain in the meeting and uh, realized that perhaps the Commission as a whole did not realize that I was facing these concerns and that's all I'm asking is that I be um, granted an exception under the circumstances of the legal problems that I faced after I bid on the property and proceeded to try to get title insurance and have documentation from Mr. Gullett that based on a Florida statute that um, even though we have an enchantment deed on this which made me feel very safe to purchase the property because it said it was free and clear of all liens and also of any enforcement and then I find later that there's another statement of limitations that didn't was not mentioned in the bid and did, I was not aware of because I've not bid on any property in the past in this manner and um, and that Mr. Gullet and another title company and two and two attorneys have told me that I must quiet the title and I don't have the money to do that or want to take on that type of stress with my health conditions because it could be a lengthy expensive process so I'm uh, in in good fairness and earnest is all I'm asking that you reconsider I know you can't give answers today but I would appreciate reconsideration on this matter. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, okay. if I could ask a question. The options were, um, if I remember correctly, that she goes in and buys the property or um, forfeit the deposit, correct? That is correct, and the that, deadline is that, is for that, this is, that, is July 1st. Is that still 1st. viable? Is that, is that still viable? That was our, that's what we voted on that day in the meeting but while, I mean, while she, we, have you paid for the property? No, sir. I'm not. I can't pay for the property now because right. I can't face the legal expenses that were unforeseen. And um, you know, I'm willing to sit down and come up with other solutions. Even you keeping my deposit. I'm not. I'm not clear on what you're asking for because I, I thought what, what we agreed in the workshop was she can either pay for it or for um, or for, uh, for walk for away from the for, uh, um, Yes, sir. The, uh, yeah, forfeit the deposit. Yes, and what I'm asking, cl to be clear, is that in, under the circumstances, these unforeseen illegal expenses, that the bid wasn't clear that, in my opinion, um, and that other exceptions have been made on this bid that I outlined in an email, and I hope the commissioners have been able to, that was, I asked that it be given to all the commissioners, 
that under the circumstances and under my health conditions and, and my financial issues, that you reconsider that. that. All I'm asking is that you reconsider refunding my deposit under the circumstances that I cannot get a clean title on a piece of property that I already went all out for in an effort to try to get through this two-year period that I'm still waiting <coughs> for disability and that I have been a public servant and I do respect everything about the public, all of what you do, all of what I've done in the past. I was not, you know, I was in procurement for over 20 years and I respect government. I didn't do it frivolously. And I'm just asking that, I know you can make exceptions and I'm asking that you consider it because, um, because this was unforeseen and it was not stated in the bid that I would face the statute that Mr. Gullett then presented to me, statute number 95, I believe, saying that the rights of redemption still exist on this property. And I don't have the money to fight an ear that comes may come forward, in, and at minimum an attorney's telling me $3,000 and I already went all out on this property, you know, depleting my savings to put down the deposit that I'm asking back. And also that, um, you know, I took out a loan and then in an effort to, to rent my existing home to my son, because I can no longer afford it, um, where I'm waiting for disability and uh, be able to um, bid on another property in the future that does have a clean, clean title or know that um, the process may require this type of expense, which the, was not the stated not in the bid. the loan's not been encumbered, correct? Pardon me? The loan's not been encumbered. You, we've, we've not been paid for the property, so the loan no, But really I had to take the loan out that, in advance. Right. That, that, that does it into an equation. Yeah. The property is sold as is. Um, is this the first time you've ever bought a property? This is the first time I've ever bought a property under these circumstances. No, yes, is this, I mean, have, have you ever bought a piece of property in the past where you've done no due diligence? I, sir, I've did my due diligence on all property that I've bought, and one okay. of those things is to get title insurance, and you don't generally go for that until after you have the property, you know, and so as soon as I won the award, I went in immediately to Mr. Gullett, and, um, well, first I went to another gentleman, and he said he didn't do title insurance, so I then went on to Mr. Gullett, who I've used in the past, and, uh, he told me at first he wouldn't insure it at all, and then he did the title and search, and, he, and I have all the documentation, and he said he would, but it would be exempt. The title insurance would be exempt from the um, limitation statute, which was never stated in the bid. It, I never, you know, the only thing that was stated in the bid was that it was an enchantment deed, and when you read the statute on enchantment, it clearly states, which I did do my research on before I bid, that it was free and clear of all lien and that all enforcement. And yet when, so this was a surprise to me that I still had to face legal action regarding the, um, the quieting of a title in the limitation statute that was never stated that could exist and did exist in, on this property. Mr. Holmes, is that correct? Well, <clears throat> without uh, attempting to address every statement that she's made, let me indicate that in reviewing the bid document that <clears throat> was, that was uh, let, there's nothing misleading about the document that I see. It's specifically stated in the document, one, that the county will convey the property by county deed. That's, a county deed is defined in statute 125.411, and it's basically a quick claim deed, for those of you that are familiar with a quick claim deed. It conveys whatever interest the county has. It's not a warranty deed, and it's to be compared to a warranty deed. A warranty deed, guarantees that the property is free and clear, no encumbrances, no liens, no claims of any third parties. A quick claim deed says whatever the county has, we're giving to you, but we're not guaranteeing what that is. But your bid, your bid solicitation goes further. It states that the county acquired this parcel via an achievement tax deed. So you stated how you got it. The parcel will be conveyed by county deed, which is what I just defined, within five business days of receipt of full payment and is offered, and this is in caps 
and in quotes, as is, where is, and then back to standard case, without representation or warranty of any nature. You can't really be more clear than that. At, at least I don't know how you would be more clear than that without writing a book in your bid solicitation. Um, and it even goes further to state that any properties purchased with potential or known code infractions must be brought into compliance within 90 days of delivery of the deed or code enforcement action will begin. So in my opinion, uh, there's nothing misleading at all about your solicitation for a bid. And I, I would take issue with her statement that she doesn't have clear title. Uh, I don't know what her status of title is without looking at a title search, of course, but if I'm understanding her correctly, what she's being told is that she can get title insurance, but much like any tax deed that you purchase, until you quiet title, which is known by almost anyone who buys a, tax, buy, a parcel by tax deed, you're not going to have one that is insurable. It's, 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 there's not a recognized encumbrance out there, a recognized lien, a recognized flaw, a recognized cloud, but title companies are not going to insure it until you have filed that quiet title suit, which most of the time results in no one filing any response, and you get a judgment after the required time has passed um, that, that, that officially declares that you are the owner of the property, and then that's, that would be insurable. So um, it, the, I guess my position would be that your solicitation for bids is clear. It isn't misleading. It doesn't lead anyone into a trap, um, and if you're going to set a precedent uh, that allows someone to, uh, to essentially uh, state that they weren't aware of what they should have been aware of, then I think you're going to have to deal with that, princi that, that, that uh, principle from this point forward. No, I, I don't think that, in, in my estimation, we should be setting a precedent. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> I'm, I'm through. Thank you. <clears throat> and I agree. I'm not asking for a precedence, but at the same time, sir, I'm not saying that it was necessarily misleading. It was very vague for somebody who's not done this in the past. I'm not an LLC company that came in and bid on some of these properties. I'm a mayor who bid on one of the properties and was given exceptions um, um, to the bid, which I'm aware of because I am a procurement officer. And I also... Um, the bid where you, where you mentioned the last para, it's also said that the county acquired this parcel by enchantment deed, and I did do my research the best that I could. I was also, during that time, suffering from a severe infection from a dog attack that happened in Putnam County, and I was on my 30 antibiotic trying to recover. Sure. And I was very fair with the county in saying, you know, I'd like to have this dog issue addressed and they said there was nothing they could do all i asked for was that Ms. no Cheryl, harm become stay on the sub and we need yes to wrap, sir but that is what part of why i did the best i could on me you know as as a new buyer under these circumstances and i did read the the statute regarding enchantment which was the first thing it said in the last paragraph <coughs> that you acquired it by achievement tax deed and for an unknown person that I'm not an LLC or a big buyer, I'm just a citizen that's trying to move to Putnam County as a retirement, the enchantment deed made me feel I was safe when I read the statute where it said it was clear, clear of all tax lien and encumbrances and free of any enforced nature. So I thought I was making an educated, to the best of my knowledge, as a new person doing this for my retirement. Um, in good faith, and I bid a very fair amount and was willing to pay it until I realized that I did have to quiet a title, and this was an unforeseen expense and um, that I can't afford, and because it could go into the thousands, and I've already bid a very high number on this property, and have thirty to forty thousand dollars to bring it up to. You know, it needs everything, you know, and I was willing to do that with friends to help me and, um, you know, debt. So all I'm asking is not an answer today, but consideration under the circumstances that my deposit be refunded or at least credited towards another bid that I could bid in the pat in the future, knowing these things do exist and, uh, and be given that fairness is all I'm asking. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Harvey. I don't want to. Um, I'm sorry. No, I, I don't want to address you. 
I don't, I don't want to address okay. you. Would it be appropriate that we talk about this process that we went through, or would you like to do that another time? Or later down the, the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I don't mind doing it short and sweet, but it yeah, needs to be short and sweet. Yeah, okay. Vote on them. okay. Uh, We're turning this into a half an hour deal instead of a three minute okay. deal. Okay, I'll do it short and, and short, and sweet. short and sweet. Because I want to, I want to bring the public up to speed. I don't want them to just see something that they just saw on TV, thinking that this commission did something bad. This commission did something good. This commission took properties, and and Commissioner Goddard, you helped us. Every commissioner here really spearheaded, taking these achievement properties, turning them back into something good, getting them back on the tax roll, getting them out there into a bid process. We worked diligently to make that work. And this board tried to put monies back into the general fund. They were a bid package. People could pick whatever bid they wanted to pick, whatever amount they wanted to put down there. There was no victim status whatsoever applied to that. They were allowed to pick any number, and that money was coming back to the general fund to make these properties valuable back to the tax roll of Putnam County. This board did nothing wrong. You heard that. and and. I want to th congratulate this board on the fact of how hard we worked over all the years. We heard this on the campaign trail. Do something with those properties. Folks, we did it. It's going to continue to happen, and we want your involvement out there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Chris Harvey. Okay. Any other on this? Okay. I'd just like to state that the, the, there was a process. It, they went through the process. Um, and we, if we did this, if we did set precedents, we're setting it for everybody. So, we're not doing um, you know, I think we just need to move on. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, moving along, uh, the next um, public speaker, um, Yvette Rees. So please state your name and address and speak clearly into the microphone. Yvette Reyes, 1291 South State Road 19, Flacco. Sorry, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, my first question is regarding animal control. Um, I'd like to get an update on where we are with the building, the property. I'd also, then my question, my second is where do I get the financials for animal control? Is that public information where I can see what's coming in, what's being spent, what's happening with the money? Yvette, would you get a little closer? I'm sorry I'm old and can't hear well. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Do I need to repeat the questions? Okay. Please. First, um, where are we with animal control, the new building, the new land, um, what's happened with it? I haven't heard anything else about it. Secondly, how do I get the financials for animal control? Is it public information? I'd like to see what it is, what's coming in, what's being spent, how, how it's managed. And thirdly, um, the road that goes into animal control that's right in front of Waste Pro, is that county property or is that Waste Pro property? Is there any way to get that great? <coughs> I was out there um, Thursday, and thankfully I took my SUV because the mud bog in there is probably just as bad as hog waller. And I don't think anybody's going to want to go in there with their car to adopt an animal. So since we're not moving forward with the building or getting it out of there, I think we should probably fix that area so it's kind of appealing for people to go out there and maybe adopt some of these animals that are stuck in there for a long time. I know you don't have answers for me now, but I'd like an update on, you know, okay, what's Chairman. going on. Okay. Um, Yvette, the, um, the information you want about the budget, that's public record. Okay. All you have to do is make a public record request to uh, Administrator Sugga's office. And, uh, that's next door, right? That's right next okay. door to that fellow right there. But, yeah, uh, but I can you'll just You'll probably be door. talking to um, the Laura. 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 Well, Laura or the Larson. lady that's <laughs> out front that answered the phone. Uh, you can email me. Alicia. Okay, Alicia, perfect. Right. Thank you. So uh, anyhow, you can get that information. As far as the building, you know, I hate to say it, but at this time, to be as honest as I can about it, it's in limbo until this commission is able to make some decisions. Uh, those decisions are, will it go on the new property out by the jail or not? 
we don't know yet. Water management's got to finish up. Once they finish up, delineate the wetlands, then they're gonna have to bring it back to us and see if it's gonna be there. If it's not gonna be there, we need to decide where it is gonna go. Um, we did not get the legislative appropriation for the to help build the thing. So yes, we got some money put aside in the in the uh, better place plan to build an animal f control facility, but it's been in there for three years now and hasn't been built because we haven't been able to decide yet where it's going to go because of these circumstances we run into on each piece of property. So basically, I think that this board is still planning on trying to build one, but it's it's just right now at this time and there's decisions that have to be made that the research is not done on. So what other, and then as far as the road in front, we had a lot of rain the other day, and plus there's garbage trucks that run down that same road. But I, I would think that, uh, is that press, is that you, or is that you, Jay, that fixes that road? Is that you, Jay? Porter, I think. Press is happy to point the finger. Who, who? That's far away from the hill, but I can find that way from Well, can you talk to them for me and see if you can get that road fixed for us? Yes, sir. Is that all right, Mr. Subs? Yeah, that's perfect. All right, thank you. Or, or maybe just make it where the trucks go the opposite way, because I think there's room the opposite well, way for the Well, I think we're going to not be able to disrupt Waste Pro's operation, but we're working hard to get that out of the landfill, Vet. We really are. I mean, it's just go government works in frustratingly slow, very frustratingly <laughs> slow. And so uh, I think it's going to get there, but it's, it just takes time. It's just a horrible situation, and we're, I, we're, I understand. we're, we're like, postponing postponing and right now those dogs are not in a comfortable situation it's 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 just sad well, and I, we I appreciate can't get you going them. out there and getting involved i really do and we we're going to do well, what I we wish can I could. as soon you're as you're not we open can. on saturdays i work in jacksonville i'm only here because i take a vacation day and i wanted to come and address you guys about it because i haven't seen anything about it it cost me a a vacation day to come here and I wanted to volunteer but you're not open on Saturdays that's another issue I think that needs to also be addressed I didn't put it on my card but since it came up sorry um, I, I, I think having it open on Saturdays for volunteers like myself that want to participate in helping with the dogs and maybe letting them out and you know just having a little play time would help because nobody's going out there on Saturday, on, on Monday through Friday to adopt a dog. Vet, I, I appreciate your passion, I really do, and I started it by trying to answer your question today, but we're supposed to try to hold this within three minutes. And Larry so we're about at okay. 12 or 15 now, so if you could, uh, <laughs> like I said, I tried to answer your questions while you was here. But, uh, All I think right, that's best so will I get further updates? I mean, should I contact you about you can. Further you can contact me or you can on? contact uh, Mr. Suggs. Mr. Suggs probably be the best yeah. contact, Mr. Suggs. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I could, thank you. Yvette, um, Lisa Suarez is sitting back there in the red shirt. If you don't know her, you might, you might want to talk with Lisa Suarez. Um, and um, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Animal Control had a, um, had a meeting this month regarding meeting with the BOCC at a workshop. Um, the Animal Control Committee, uh, the Citizens Committee, <coughs> is working to move this thing along in a more expeditious manner. Um, so uh, I agree, we've been dragging our feet. We could have hired a consultant that could have done wetlands delineation in less than five days. For whatever reason, um, we've consulted with Water Management District. Um, me personally, I think that was a poor choice, but you know, I, I've been here for seven months and we've been waiting for wetlands delineation for seven months. As a contractor, we wouldn't wait seven days. But uh, I think this, this is where the citizens are gonna be coming in and talking to with the uh, county commission. There is a, a uh, committee that meets every other month, and maybe you could get involved with that. Um, they're all, yeah, you know, I know Lisa. I, I was actually there and adopted a little puppy. On uh, I, I, I would, you know, if know Lisa, you are passionate, I would encourage you to get with a committee, maybe um, serve on the committee if you can. And okay, I'll talk to Lisa about it. Yeah. All right, thank you. Hold us accountable, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, next speaker, um, uh, Mr. Douglas Hayes. Hello, I'm Douglas Hayes, candidate for county commissioner, 216 Hilltop Road, Satsuma. Um, might as well carry on part of the conversation the young lady just had. In regards to the advisory board that had met, it was at 9 o'clock in, in the morning on a Monday. That's probably why you have a poor turnout. 
I would like to offer a suggestion that your advisory boards and your workshops, like the budget workshops, people, the citizens that want to participate or be there are working. I wasn't able to attend the advisory board and I've been wanting to so bad, but I had an opportunity to earn a few dollars to pay for fuel so I could come up and see you guys today. And then in regards to the building, um, I'm still have yet to hear about, I was, it's been mentioned that there was an alternative building and, as a choice and I had pointed out the selection of the building that was across from the library. Um, at the workshop, I would have been presented some ideas in regards to uh, the concern with the surrounding neighborhood. There's enough area there for a landscape buffer to, and um, like I said, looks like everybody are animal owners. And so then anyway, I think that it's still a feasible location. And then as far as the price, because it's still been not stated by the realtor that there's any structural issues that we can lowball the bid for like 450 to 500,000, still have money left over to, to make repairs and um, customizing and that kind of thing for the animal control. Along with the fact that I, because of the size of the facility and being located close to the college, is to work in conjunction with them to inspire a veterinary studies. Um, that way our children and even myself that's considering veterinary studies uh, would not have to leave the county. And then the uh, spade and neutering process where we're having to, to go to a out of county veterinary school to get those services performed, we can get that all done in house. And that way we maintain some independence. Uh, the next thing is that I sent, saw in the newspaper Sorry about that. I saw in the newspaper that um, there was some money concerns in regards to renovation to the parks that we have in, in the county. There was one that apparently is really, uh, there was a nice design, but it's all about money. I would like to offer a suggestion. The state parks and the library system have what they call the friends of. That way you have a nonprofit that's a citizen involvement. Um, I spoke with the parks manager lady and she said that's kind of a grassroots event, so she has to not really try to, to uh, get the people going, you know. But we could reach out to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to get the ball rolling to have the friends up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Okay, Mr. Ed Brown. Morning. Morning. I'm uh, here. Please state your name and address, please. Okay, it's Edward Brown, and it's 323 Downhill Trail, Satsuma. Uh, I'm here to kind of, I wouldn't say complain, but maybe inform. The road, I'm not complaining about the whole road, just one little section where it drops down to uh, Downhill Trail from uh, on Fox Den from uh, uh, maybe 100, 100 yards. The road is not really properly maintained. They're scraping and scraping and scraping. I could show you pictures. They don't scrape so much that the upper part where the uh, uh, level uh, first started is a foot below. So you're scraping and you're scraping a lot of the uh, dirt away from, from where it should be. When it rains, it creates a, uh, a river. They brought some dirt there, but they brought the wrong dirt. They brought sand. I'm here because I can't drive my motorcycle down there. It, it's like driving a motorcycle on the beach. So if they <clears throat> brought the right dirt, maybe rocks, whatever, it would be all right. Uh, <coughs> I don't know what the schedule is for them scraping. Every time they come out there to scrape, I try to tell them, go this way or go that way. They can't do it. So I'm here to see if anything could be done or even if you have to raise the taxes a little bit to maintain the roads. I, I, you know, I, I don't think we mind paying a little bit extra, but we need to do something. 
the trash trucks come through there like like they're racing, you know, and it adds to the problem. So it's not economically feasible to keep bringing the wrong dirt to scrape and to do all that and not solving the problem. So we need to solve the problem. Okay. Mr. Brown, uh, you said it was in Satsuma. Are you, are you past the Duns Creek Bridge or are you before the Duns Creek Bridge? Past the Duns Creek Bridge. In Hudau, right there on our, um, right where uh, it goes up the hill and it dead ends, and you make a left, which is a paved road, which my and it dead ends, right where that dead ends, and it starts to drop, that's where the big problem is. Because when it rains, and like I said, I can show you pictures. Mr. Brown, that's okay. Mr. Brown, I, I, uh, I believe you. Press, would you raise your hand, please? <laughs> that right there is the director. Have you talked to public works <coughs> yet, or did you just decide to come in here? They've been there twice. Okay. And it's like deaf ears. We'll send somebody out there. And I live, I'm retired, so, you know, it's not like I, I'm going anywhere. I, any, anything happens in it, I'm right there. I haven't seen anybody. I left my phone number. Nobody's contacted me. Like I say, if you have to raise my taxes a little bit more, I, I don't walk, mind. Walk up here, Mr. Brown. Would you, uh, Press, would you walk out in the lobby and talk to this gentleman? If they don't call you back or they don't do something about it, at least come and see and see what's going on, contact me and see what happens. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Government at work. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion of, of our agenda. And Commissioner, we'll move down to the consent agenda, item four. Uh, there is an addendum, uh, 4G, to add the list of the correspondence distributed to become part of the public record. And then 4H, Public Works 2018 Dirt to Pave, a change order number four for $21,944.61. So those will be added to the consent agenda. Uh, any items wishing to be pulled by commissioners? We'll start with Commissioner Goddard. I have none. Commissioner Rawls? Item H. H. Commissioner Harvey? I have none, sir. Commissioner Turner? I have none. <clears throat> and I have none. Okay. Uh, item H. Um, you want to pass uh, A okay. through G, Mr. Yeah, Chairman? Yeah, we could get a motion to pass um, A through G. So moved. Second. Okay, we've got a proper motion by Commissioner Rawls and a proper second by Commissioner Turner. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, A through uh, G passes. Um, yep. Mr. Chairman, if before we get started, if uh, I'd like to just say a quick thing. The uh, thing that they're requesting when they went out and did their surveys to pave Kite Road out in, in San Matia, there were some water meters in the roadway. So they had to pay to move the water meters before they could do it, and they didn't know they were in the roadway because they hadn't done their surveying until after the project right. started. Right. We've been trying to get this project started since last November. And we keep running into these little things, but I think this is the last one we got, isn't it, Press? Trying to just move these water meters out of the way? That is correct. Okay, so basically that's what the change order's for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. The reason I wanted to pull this was I wanted to find out what, what caused this to happen. Um, is this a latent defect from a contractor that put it in um, when, when it was installed? Did we install these ourselves? These, what you understand, the, the actual roadbed the dirt road bed is right. not in the center of the right of way at all. I understand that. So when we went out there, utility company went out there to install water meters, they put them off the edge of the dirt pavement to serve the houses. When there we was went no out, consideration for, for surveying at the time? No, so we okay. didn't ha have survey at the time. We set the water meters, and they've been there for quite a few years, to be honest with you. And, and well, here, here, here's my question. I'm, I'm assuming that this is polyethylene tubing going to a corporate stop, correct? Yes. The okay, so follow my logic. $2,100 to extend these, how far each? They're different, very different ways because the road, we straight 15, the road 20 in. feet? Sir? 15, 20 feet each? Some less? of them are more, some of them are less. Okay. 
$2,100 per for a piece of polyethylene tubing, and we can probably reuse the corp stop and, and the um, adapter. What is the, what, why is this something we can't perform in-house? I do not have the staff in-house to do this. I have two people in my utility department right now. They do not have the capability to go do, move water meters. We really have to pay. I mean, can you visualize the components I'm talking about? I understand. We're talking about less than $50 in materials probably. Where is the, the 2100 per uh, extension come in at? Commissioner, they gave us a cost estimate based on their unit prices to move utilities. Now, I do not have the staff to do it in-house. They have the contract to do Kite Road. This is a reasonable fee. We pay, we've had other services that have started leaking and have gone bad. We're averaging about $2,000 or more per service to have them redone and fixed. You got to so you, you, said, you said it's a reasonable fee, and my question is this. What is the definition of reasonable? Have you, have you tried to source or get any pricing? I guess what I would like, just me, well, I'll, I'll, I'll vote to pass this. But moving forward, I'd like, to, I'd like you to get me a cost for the polyethylene tubing, a new corporate stop, and a union. Send me an email and say, because your commission, this is what it's going to cost to buy the materials we bought. I'll call um, Hughes Waterworks up in Jacksonville. And get and get a cost as well. I can give. I, you, I mean, the cost is the cost to buy the material. I agree with you. It's not a huge. Co it's the labor cost to dig everything. How much up. labor is involved? It's a good bit of labor. I mean, we have been out there before. There's other utilities that they have to work around cable TV, telephone. They have yeah. cable and TV, cable TV and telephone in the ground out there. Or is it aerial? Some of us on the ground, some of us aerial. But we have the other utilities to work through. I mean. We've run into this situation several times. Uh, this is an older part of the water system, and the corp stops were not put in correctly when it was originally put in. I, Mr. Commissioner Turner, I don't know how many years ago not that, that was old. put in. But you say it's the old part of the water system. The system's not that old to begin with. Well, part th our water system <clears throat> is 11 years old now. Again, it's not that old, but I, I, I'll stop. Um, I just, I, I, I got heartburn. Okay. about a very small amount of materials, a very, what, what should be a small amount of labor and having to pay $21,000 to move nine of these things. And no, I'm not grandstanding. I just, I absolutely hate the fact that we can't hire somebody in-house and you just said we, we had to move some of these in the past. That means we're paying more for these reasonable costs. We could hire somebody and put them on staff and avoid these reasonable costs. And these are gonna, these are gonna continue down the road. We're gonna have other ones, but we don't have money to waste, but in my estimation, we're wasting money by paying $21,000 to move these things. How, how, what was the total on the, on the project for that one road? For that one the road? Pay, the total paving on just that, because that, you've, you've got several in there, obviously. Uh, I don't have that particular breakdown for that road with me. We're, I don't know. This was a this $2 million was a, contract, and, and you got a $21,000 change order. Um, that should look more like two thousand dollars in my estimation, but um, you know we're, we're spending a lot of money. Uh, Twelve thousand dollars to connect, connect people to sewer down in, in San Mateo um, should cost less than half that. It just seems like we're we're, we're throwing money out there um, because this is the way government works. And I would like us to adopt an attitude of maybe we should be more frugal with the money and spend it more the way a business would. If this was your business, I promise you, you wouldn't be spending $21,000. You'd be out there with a the shovel yourself fixing it and saying, look, I'll do it for less than a hundred bucks. All right, Commissioner Rawls, I, I, I agree. And, um, but press from what I understand here is this is holding up the project. Yes, sir. You felt at the beginning of this project or sometime during this project that you could do this in-house. Right. Right. And you cannot do this in-house. That is correct. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm clear on that. Okay. All right. Any Mr. Other, Chairman, any I, other move, comments? I move item H for approval. Second. Okay. We've got a proper motion by Commissioner Harvey and proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. So it passes. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you, press. Thought we we're going to have a hard time making it to 10 o'clock after recess. <laughs> <laughs> after recess before the public hearings, but that didn't happen, did it? So, okay, Mr. Mike Brown, um, we have two public hearings. Item A, a zoning map amendment, uh, case R19-003. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman.
chairman and board. Uh, give me a second. Um, rezoning R19-003, it's an application uh, to rezone, uh, or the applicant is Lisa Ann Carley, uh, is a zoning district change from residential one to ag on two parcels, totaling 3.11 acres. Uh, the properties are located at one 14 South 2nd Street and 101 Crockett Avenue in Satsuma. Uh, just a little background, the parcels, future land use on both parcels are Ag 2, uh, and the parcels are zoned R1A. Uh, the parcel uh, 114 2nd Street has a single family residence on it. Uh, 101 Crockett Avenue is vacant. Uh, there are no wetlands and no special flood hazard areas on either parcels. Planning, commercial, planning Commission her, held a hearing on this rezoning on May 8, 2019. Um, I don't know if you can see the uh, aerial uh, indicating, showing the two parcels. Um, as I indicated, uh, future land use of these two parcels and the surrounding areas, Act 2, um, the rezoning or the zoning in the area is a combination of R1 and agricultural zoning. Uh, it's a sort of a mix. Um, and the request is to rezone the properties to agriculture. Uh, at, under the agriculture to future land use, the primary use is for silviculture, range land, and agric agricultural uses, uh, residential uses, uh, are allowed at a density of one dwelling unit per 20 acres. Um, R1, the existing zoning of the R1A uh, per, is predominantly for residential uses, uh, does not allow uh, agricultural uses, which is a desire of the owner and the reason for the uh, uh, request. Um, in analyzing the request, um, staff finds that, as I've indicated, the future land use is Ag 2 and the proposed zoning of agriculture is consistent with that future land use designation. Uh, both 2nd Street and Crockett Avenue are local roads um, with available capacity. Um, as I indicated earlier, there's no wetlands or flood hazard areas on either of those parcels. <coughs> Uh, and the surrounding area is a mix of a agricultural and sparse residential uses. Uh, the R1A zoning district does not allow raising of farm animals and other ag uses as um, desired by the owner or the applicant. Uh, staff finds that the proposed zoning to ag is consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent <coughs> with the local locational requirements for the ag zoning district, is compatible with the surrounding uses. Uh, the Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval uh, for this rezoning. Uh, staff recommends approval of the request to amend the zoning map from R1A to agriculture for the subject two parcels. Uh, any questions of staff at this point? Okay. Any questions of staff? Mike, I have one. The Crockett Avenue, I think you said it was a local road. Is it actually a road? It's from the aerial, doesn't look it like it is. It is a, it's a road on paper, basically. <laughs> um, it hasn't been construct, uh, developed, but there is a, uh, a road laid out on, on. Um, <coughs> let okay. me look at the aerial um, on on the paper on paper, and that's not unique to Putnam County. Okay. All right. Any qu other questions of staff? Okay, seeing none, since it's a public hearing, I'd like to open the public comment portion of this meeting. Any individuals wishing to speak for or against this case? Okay, seeing none, is the applicant here? Would you like to say anything? You don't have to. Okay. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll close the public comment portion of this meeting. Mr. Chairman, uh, I move this uh, request uh, is approved and 
we find and we find it consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan. Second. Second. Here we got a proper motion to approve by Commissioner Turner and a proper second by Commissioner Harvey. Uh, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Uh, case passes. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Okay, we'll move. I think our applicant was freezing to death out there in the audience. <laughs> you look like you were freezing. You were sitting out there. <laughs> Warm up so you go outside. So. <laughs> Won't take long Won't either. Take long. <laughs> yeah. Okay, item B, zoning map amendment, uh, case number. Um, Mr. Chairman, R1903, uh, is that a mistake? The next rezoning, R19 004. Four. Uh, this is a request. The applicant is Sheila Ramey. Uh, this is a request to change the zoning from. Uh, Commercial two, <coughs> two and agriculture uh, to commercial general C3 on a single parcel totaling 1.18 acres. Property is located at 1964 South Highway 17 in Crescent City. Just a little background uh, the parcel, as I indicated, or the parcel is designated commercial on the future land use so, uh, map. Uh, the parcel has split zoning with. The western portion comprising of, of the C2 uh, zoning and the eastern portion agriculture. Uh, in 2004, the county changed the, the future land use on this parcel from Ag 1 to commercial. It has approximately 485 feet of frontage on seven, Highway US Highway 17. And again, there are no wetlands or special flood hazard areas on, uh, on this property. Planning Commission. Uh, heard this at their hearing on May 8, 2019. Uh, here's an aerial showing the uh, outline of the, of the parcel. As you can see, it's a former borough area um, with uh, making the uh, soils uh, really not very conducive for agricultural purposes. Um, as I indicated, future land use is commercial uh, with commercial um, to the east and west and north and across you and a portion of commercial across US 17. Um, current zoning, as I indicated, was split zoning for the parcel just to the west of um, the parcel there to the northwest. There is an area of C4 uh, commercial uh, zoning and there's also C2 commercial zoning to the south uh, across 17 as, as well as some R, R2 zoning. Um, commercial categories on the future land use are areas cons um, intended for commercial uses and primary um, in areas to serve uh, primary close proximity to contiguous populations. Um, as I indicated, the, the C2 zoning district, which is on the western half of this project, uh, is for a lighter commercial land use. Um, agriculture is primarily for agricultural uses um, and does not allow commercial uses. Um, the C3 commercial designation is for a mix of light and medium intensity commercial uses. Uh, in analyzing the uh, requested rezoning, um, the future land use is commercial for the entire parcel. Uh, the ag zoning does limit the utilization of the entire parcel for commercial uses. Um, US Highway 17 is designated as a principal arterial with an adopted level of service D. There is adequate capacity on US Highway 17 to support development of the parcel. Again, no wetlands or special flood hazard areas. Um, and the parcel is immediately west uh, of, or the parcel immediately west, as I pointed out, is an intensive commercial C4 uh, zoning designation. Uh, staff finds that the proposed C3 rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan, is consistent with the locational requirements of the C3 zoning district, is compatible with the surrounding uses. Uh, the Planning Commission did unanimously recommend approval of the rezoning. 
staff recommends approval of the request to amend the zoning map from commercial C2 and ag to commercials general C3 for the subject parcel. Do you have any questions of staff? Any questions of staff? Okay. Um, I, uh, I do. The, um, there's a lot of proposed uses for this property, yeah, but see. I think you discussed that it might be wanting to do some type of repair of vehicles eventually. Uh, yeah. And again, it, once it's rezoned, any, anything allowed within the C3 zoning district could happen out there. What um, the applicant has indicated is it's a pending sale. Um, the individual that's purchasing it has a relation with, uh, and I don't know the extent of it, um, with the Postal Service. And they do, um, my understanding is do some work with, uh, on postal vehicles, and that is likely what will happen at this location. But again, anything allowed with under the C3 zoning district could go there. Mike, if it becomes a, a repair facility or maintenance facility, which I have no problem with at all, it's in there, and you know, I'm for approving this, but um, is, does it have to go before development review or yes. some other kind uh, of a committee? Any, any to be a, what, what I'm yeah. getting at is, is I don't want to see a junkyard there. Okay, we have enough of those, and I, you know, I'm in the forest business, so I understand a salvage yard and those type things, but of just being able to. Um, allow vehicles to sit out that are unrepaired or things like that? Would they have to put in some type of buffer or fencing and those um, type of things? The, the, any development that go, will go out there is required to meet um, all the, the requirements in Article 7 of the Land Development Code, which includes buffers based on the use. Um, the new use, any use out there, because it's a vacant parcel, will be required to, to be reviewed by the Development Review Committee, um, where... Um, Conditions can be placed on it uh, for when they receive their their approval. So there has there's two checks. One with is with your land development code and the requirements in there, and then also uh, through the development review committee, which includes all of the local agencies, all your local departments, as well as some of the state and regional agencies, such as the water management district for wetlands and impervious surface uh, or, and and retention. Um, as well as the buffers will, and landscaping will all be um, included as part of that review. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Any other questions, staff? Commissioner Rawls? Is C3 generally described as light industrial? No. Uh, C3 is um, our general commercial. So it, it's, it's more of a medium. It allows both light commercial and the medium commercial. So it's What about industrial? Uh, industrial is not allowed in the C3 uh, zoning district. Would would a repair facility fall under industrial or no? Uh, no, it would fall. It it will fit what what um, I I've provided and what they what they've indicated. I provide them with this uh, listing of the uses. What they've indicated is they felt that the C3 zoning district was met their what they need uh, need. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll open the public comment portion of this meeting, this hearing. Any individuals wish, wishing to speak for or against this? Okay, is the applicant here? Okay, all right, so you want to speak either for or against. Okay, please come to the podium and state your name and address and speak clearly in the microphone. Melissa Cummings. <clears throat> My address is 123 Ingraham Drive, Satsuma, Florida. I'm the purchaser. We're highway contractors for the post office. He had it a little right. <laughs> what we are going to be trying to do is sell right-hand drive vehicle, vehicles to the post office. A lot of the rural carriers have to drive their own vehicles, so they need right-hand drive converted vehicles. It's very hard to find. Mm -hmm. Like the old Saturns, they came that way. You can't get them like that. So we are highway contractors for the Satsuma. We have all five routes there. So if you need to know about the roads, you can... You can ask us as per the guy on downhill. Um, but they need to be bought. They're not, they're having to drive in the middle of their cars. It's very dangerous. All of our vehicles are the N Nissan NV200s that have the right hand drives and then we have our little tray. And also the post office does not give us money extra to have a, a backup vehicle. So a lot of the carriers, even the rural carriers, when their vehicle is down, 
they're out of work until they can get it repaired. So we also will be renting them out. The only repairs that we will be doing is if someone wants their van right-hand drive converted, that's what we will be doing. We won't be doing engine work, changing oils, tires, none of that. This is more of a car dealership slash rental for the postal carriers. Nobody else is gonna rent right-hand drive vehicles. So it's not like you can go to Enterprise and <laughs> rent one. So that's what the proposal is. That's what we are trying to do. And there will be a two-bay garage with an office, and then we'll also have part of the office split so we can have our other company paperwork in there. And then the outside will probably have a little canopy for our camper because we travel a lot with, um, we have routes all the way up into Georgia, so we use that to go back and forth. So it's not, we can't have it trashy because we represent the post office, so please don't think that there's gonna be stuff laying all out there because <laughs> that's not what we're, that's not what we wanna do. Okay, <coughs> thank you. Um, okay, thank you. thank you very much. Um, would the applicant like to say anything or you're good? Okay, anybody else wishing to make public comment? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion of this hearing. Mr. Chairman, uh, staff finding case R-19-004 in compliance with the goals, objectives, and policy of the comprehensive plan, I move to approve. Second. We've got a proper motion by Commissioner Turner and a proper second by Commissioner Harvey to move case R-19-004 forward. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Case passes. Thank you very much. Mr. Brown, thank you so much. Uh, we'll move down to item six. Um, Mr. Kenny Downs. Mr. Chairman, before we move to item six, could I request that we discuss the insurance th um, thing, or were you going to do it later? Or? I was going to do it in, at the end, at unless the end? Ms. Julie's got to go somewhere. I don't think, I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, any comments, Mr. Downs? Uh, just one comment. Mr. Smith has gone to Orlando for a clerk conference. Sorry, he couldn't be here today, so I'm filling in for him today. But we don't have any comments today. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Turner, and I was going to bring that up if you want to. Miss um, um, Julianne, can you give us a, an update um, on the insurance before we move down to appointments? Um, I'm happy to report to you the update is that the um, protests which were filed in reference to RFP 1910 and to RFP 1918 have been formally resolved with an official withdrawal of those protests after a meeting with myself and the protesting party. So that concludes the protest. Um, we can return those items to the agenda either as a walk-on item today or on the July 9th agenda whichever you would like to be. The agenda items will be presented just as they were previously. Um, no recommendations, no changes, no, no anything to what was previously um, recommended to you by the evaluation committee and then approved by the insurance commission is coming forward for the insurance committee. Okay, Mr. Right. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Turner. I, I think this was, uh, if, um, if my memory serves me correctly, this is the item, these are the items that were uh, pulled because there was a protest to the uh, RFP. Correct. And so the protest has ended. Correct. This was off the consent agenda last, at the two weeks ago at the meeting. Right. And now that's over and done and it's been, re been revoked. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to see this move forward today. Uh, I'd like to see it move forward. It's the recommendation that came from the insurance committee. It's the recommendation that the board had talked about in workshop. Um, it, I feel like it would have passed easily two weeks ago if we uh, if we hadn't had a bid protest that's now been um, that's now been pulled. So uh, I'd like to see this move forward today. And with that, I, I move that we move these two items forward: uh, RFP 1910 and, uh, and 1918. Well, since he's gone ahead and moved that, I'll second it. But I, I think Mr. Suggs wanted okay. to comment. Before we get the uh, Administrator, so we've got a proper motion by Commissioner Turner and a proper second by Commissioner Goddard. So we'll start deliberation and discussion. So 
Administrator Suggs. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in speaking with our, uh, our attorney, I think the appropriate thing to do at this point, and I agree, I think it's time to move this thing forward, but we would need a motion, a second, and an approval vote to add this item as an emergency item to this agenda before we could go uh, go down that road of having discussion with a particular motion to, to okay, either Okay, so what you're saying is I need to withdraw that particular motion and start with a motion that adds it to the agenda as an emergency item? Yes, sir, that would be appropriate. Thank you. Okay, I will uh, withdraw my motion. If, uh, I'll if withdraw my withdraw second. And I'll, rep I'll ask uh, to move that we, uh, that we uh, place this on the agenda as an emergency item. And I'll second that. Okay. We had... Um, a motion um, that was rescinded by Commissioner Turner and the second by Commissioner uh, Goddard. Now we have a motion to put this back on as an emergency item on this agenda by Commissioner Turner and a second by Commissioner Goddard. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Now, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve this uh, RFPs 1910 and 1918 uh, due to the recommendation of the insurance committee. And I'll second. second. Okay, we've got a proper motion to approve this by Commissioner Turner, proper second by Commissioner Goddard. Okay, any discussion? Another question. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. What are we approving? Stop. For the exact recommendation from the insurance committee that we Which? go forward with the two RFPs. Could, would you, Julie, yes, could sir. you? If I can help you. On RFP 1910, what's before you is approval of the rank order as proposed by the Evaluation Committee to allow final negotiations to commence in rank order. Rank order being Florida Blue, number one, Diversified Benefit Administrators, number two. Again, on RFP 1910, we uh, move to reject part two of 1910 because on RFP 1918, the recommended action is to approve the rank order as proposed by the Evaluation Committee to allow final negotiations to commence rank order being Florida Blue 1 and Cigna 2. So we're approving the rank order only? <clears throat> and then You're approving? This, will, this will allow us to start negotiating? Mm -hmm. In rank order. So this right. closes out your formal procurement process. Right. At this point, we will continue to negotiate with those in rank order. Um, and then, of course, it will come back to the committee as, as we've all previously discussed many times. The committee or the com I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Commissioner Harvey? It'll come back to the committee or the commission? So once the, it will come back to the committee once the committee has final negotiations it, to give you, remember you have an ultimate choice to make yeah. outside of procurement. You might, can either renew your existing plan and those renewals are gonna be released. I believe they're released this week. Um, and so we're gonna have the final an analysis of that or you can move forward with what you've um, the committee negotiated. will make a recommendation to the full board of county commissioners. That's my that understanding point. of how you guys have um, exactly created right. that committee, yes. Thank you. So Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yeah, Mr. At, at any point, will, the, will we hear from the proposers when, when they release their pricing? Are we going to have any presentations by? By proposers. At this point, we're only going to be negotiating with the top-ranked proposer. Okay. So your proposer is only Florida Blue, assuming that we don't hit a, an, an objection. So what we have suggested um, is both to have Florida Blue and your independent consultant, the Bailey Group, present to the committee, which also includes the five of you, all the information before you in order to make that decision. Okay. I'm good. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? Okay, we've got a proper motion and we've got a proper second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, it passes. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you, Julian. You. Thank you. Okay, we'll move down to item seven, appointments. Um, any commissioners have any appointments today? And I'll start with Commissioner Rawls. Um, yes, uh, Vicki Miles has expressed an interest in staying on the um, Fair Authority Board. So, uh, Unless anybody has any objections, I'd like to leave her on there. And uh, on the Greenbelt Advisory, um, uh, George Deloge and can stay on there as well. Okay. Any others? Okay. You done, Commissioner Rawls? 
Yes. Just a two. Okay, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Goddard? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, on the fair authority, Jay Browning definitely wants to stay on there, and I'd like to keep him on there. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Commissioner That's Turner? Uh, yes, sir. I have multiple today. <laughs> um, on the Animal Services Advisory Committee, um, I want to nominate for one of the at-large positions, Scott Brahman. Scott is a local rancher and he owns a feed store here in town too, or his family does. Um, and I think that one has to be uh, voted, yeah, that nominated, has to be voted, voted on because it's an at-large. So, okay. You're making that a motion? I do make that a motion, sir. Okay, we have a motion to um, nominate Scott Brahman second right. to the Animal Services Board. We got a proper second by um, Commissioner Rawls. Okay, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, passes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to appoint as the District 3 representative to Animal Services Advisory Committee, Charles Harrington. Okay. Um, on the fair authority, I would like to, uh, as a District 3 representative, I'd like to appoint Cassie Nettles. As the District 3 representative on the Greenbelt Advisory Board, I'd like to uh, appoint Chance Clay. As the uh, at-large, I'd like to dominate Larry Corn to continue serving. I'll That's second so moved. that. Yep. Okay, we're a proper motion to um, nominate Mr. Larry Corn to continue his service on the um, Greenbelt Advisory Board. We have a second by Commissioner Harvey. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, District 3, I'd like to appoint Gina Sims. Mm. Okay. Fine Gina choice. Sims. Okay. I think so. I think so, too. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, that's all that I have for today. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Harvey. Mr. Chairman, on Greenbelt Advisory Board, I'd like to reappoint Mr. Danny Tilton. And that's my only one for today, sir. Okay. All right, and I have one. I'd like to uh, renominate uh, Mr. Robbie Shoals for the um, Fair Authority Board uh, for District 1. Okay, got all the appointments. Okay, we'll go down to um, closing comments. Uh, Administrator Suggs. <clears throat> yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, good morning. Uh, just uh, real quick housekeeping is all. Uh, received a call uh, from um, uh, Mr. Browning, David Browning up in Tallahassee. Uh, looks like the governor's budget uh, is uh, it's either been approved or close to being approved. Uh, the appropriations that we put in for this year, uh, we've got uh, from, uh, last word I got Friday was that we're going to retain and, and be awarded the $500,000 drainage mitigation for East Putnam, and, uh, which is uh, uh, very good news for those folks, uh, our farmers and, and folks out in East Putnam. So uh, commend Commissioner Turner for pushing and, and fighting for that for the last couple of years. Uh, as you know, we were severely impacted out there after Hurricane Irma, so I think this is going to be a big benefit to them. Uh, unfortunately, our other appropriations have not made the cut, or didn't make the cut, I should say. So uh, we'll keep working hard. We'll keep lobbying hard in Tallahassee. Mr. Browning does a good job for us. Uh, Representative Payne does a good job for us. We just need to keep the contacts and keep working hard. And, uh, and appropriations, uh, I believe the sessions is starting early this year, so we need to be working on that now and, and getting prepared uh, for our, uh, our, our turn in sometime around January. So that's all I have, Mr. Chair, so thank you. Okay. Thank you, Administrator Suggs. Okay. County Attorney, uh, Mr. Don Holmes. No comment. Okay. Thank you for standing in today. Uh, evidently, the fish must be biting. Um, is Rush fishing, probably? Based upon the pictures I received yesterday, they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame him. So. Okay. Commissioner comments? We'll start with uh, Commissioner Goddard. Right. Well, normally I always say how I like to drive around and look at everything, but I have been out of town a lot. Uh, we were at the FAC conference down in Orlando, which is very informative, but more so the time that I got to spend with the other commissioners. 
and the problems that they face. Uh, you know, we sit here, we only look at our local area and the problems that we have, and they're faced with the, um, not just the same things, but some of theirs are much worse, things that I, I, I'm glad we don't have to deal with. They, uh, traffic is unbelievable. Towns, uh, I was so surprised with some of these towns that are growing, their failing infrastructure is killing them because uh, they're having to tear up the road system and put in new infrastructure and then build the road back. So it, it was it was good to listen to, to them and uh, in the different uh, innovative ways that uh, they're dealing with different things which can help us here. Um, one thing I'm going to say, <clears throat> and I always say, it, get out there and see what we got in Putnam County. And, and traveling through Florida, we are so fortunate to live in this county. We, we sometimes we pull up to the stop sign and there's three cars coming and we go, oh my gosh, look at the traffic. <laughs> and, and it's just because of how we, we, it's just what we're used to. And then you go out of town and you go, oh my gosh. Gosh, you know, I should have brought a sandwich with me. I'm going to be here forever. It's, it, it, we just don't appreciate what we have. And something that I saw so well, the graduation rates for our kids here and, and where they're heading. And we had a group of them that were trying to help them in their different branches going into the different colleges. And we're fortunate there too. We've got some very good, very intelligent children moving out to become adults that may not come back, but I've got a feeling they're going to be like a lot of us. Once they get out there and they see the other side, they're going to go, oh my gosh, I'm ready to come back home. Um, that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Goddard. Commissioner Rawls? Um, St. John's Avenue Extension from Highway 19 to Ziegler Drive. <laughs> Enough said. If you haven't been there, you need to drive there. It's probably, the, it is absolutely the best piece of road in the greater Palatka area. Um, <clears throat> it really makes you realize how bad the other roads are. Uh, Kelvin Hare got recognized the other night by the Crescent City Rotary Club at an induction ceremony for his participation in the uh, activities in Tallahassee. And it was, he was spoken about today as well. But um, again, you know, kudos to Crescent City uh, for having someone like Kelvin Hare, but also for their, uh, their participation um, in the uh, rural days and then um, Rotary Park we discussed that last week at the uh, workshop um, is a project that's going to be taken on by the uh, uh, Palaka Rotary Club they've raised a hundred thousand dollars for the folks that don't realize it um, to redo project play which is at uh, Triangle Park at 120 Carter Road and um, the uh, Port Authority um, put up a couple hundred thousand dollars and also asked them to try to come up with a splash park a feature as well in that so um, I think that's something that we can all wrap our heads around and, and really appreciate uh, going forward and it looks like uh, if, if um, the noon club has their their way it's going to be done within the next year so looking forward to working with that thank you Commissioner Rawls yeah I mentioned that at the chamber meeting that the resurface in St. John's Avenue was was done and I figured that I'd get a standing ovation but that's what <laughs> I did and so anyway yeah. Commissioner Harvey you're not going to save me for last no, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, do want to say thank you and congratulations to Buddy, our new accredited county commissioner. Um, he was certifiable before, but now he's accredited. <laughs> I'm sorry, certified before, but now he's accredited. And um, we congratulate you, Buddy, for that. Um, as you know, I serve on the Florida Association of Counties uh, Foundation. And recently, the name was changed to the Institute of County Government. And uh, that's exciting to see what's going to take place there with the new educational programs that are coming out through your Florida Association of County um, Foundation. So that's exciting. Um, at convention, we also had the, I hit the ground running on our insurance trust that you so graciously allowed me to serve on the insurance trust. And I enjoyed doing that. Um, don't forget on July 4th in the town of Inalarkin, a parade at 10 o'clock in the morning. Y'all are all welcome to be there. It will be hot and it looks like it'll be a little bit rainy. So be able to be there. And I wanna say to all my commissioners, I so enjoy serving with each and every one of you. Um, there's not a time that uh, not any of us that are 
that need help that we're not there to help each other. And uh, Buddy and Jeff were able to help me this last weekend with the Women's Club. Uh, Commissioner Turner uh, recently had a little setback in his life and was not able to be there, and I appreciate it. But I remember a time when you didn't have to be there at 2 in the morning, and you came and helped me out. And Commissioner Pickens was unavailable. But I tell you, we all work together, and it really shows. And last week we were supposed to cook 106 butts. Um, we accounted for 105, cannot find the other one. Don't know what happened to it. It seemed to run away, uh, but... We must have rubbed that butt too much. We must have rubbed that butt too much. <laughs> yeah, at the woman's club, too, by the way. <laughs> but, but we had a great time. It was hot. Um, I did tell them no more butt rubbing in, in June. It just does not work anymore. Um, I do want to give kudos to Commissioner Turner and Mr. Suggs and Quinn Romay, you know, um, it, it's a tough job up here. And there's a lot of, I always say we have a lot of balls in the air in our, in our job and every day somebody opens a door and throws new ones in. And uh, the fire department in East Palaka drove by there Sunday and uh, it really looks good and waiting on one last thing and uh, to get the CO and um, I mean, we're, we're on a time certain for that. And but everybody, I mean, Mr. Suggs, you've been there every Wednesday morning. Y'all have a meeting over there to make sure that thing is on track and on schedule. And uh, there's nothing more that every one of our commissioners doesn't want is to build a building. But there's always seems to be a circumstance involved. And uh, when you attach government to it, the price seems to go up and up and up and up and up. And how do we stop that? And some days it just doesn't seem to work. And we all want those prices down. We do. Uh, it just, you know, we want to pull our hair out. Um, but I don't want to look like Chris Doolin just yet. <laughs> <By the way. laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> so, but, uh, but I do enjoy serving. And, um, and I love, and I want to say this, I enjoy seeing our staff back here. I know that takes away from some of their work. But it's so nice to go, you meet with them and go sit there and get that worked out because that helps and it really does help. And um, you'd be surprised at how we can make that happen. So our job is to fil facilitate you, our, our customers, the, the people, the citizens of Putnam County and our staff together. And everybody does want to work together in this county. And I can tell you the meetings I've been sitting in the last few weeks, no one wants to say no. They're all trying to say yes and Mike Brown if he's not in here, Mike is here. Um, there was a case the other day that, you know, buyer beware, they should have done their homework, they didn't do their homework, and Mike is saying, okay, we gotta find an answer here. The answer should be no. How can we make this happen for him? There was no arm twisting, there was no nothing like that, and Mike was able to find an answer for him. But they had to jump through some hoops, but there was an answer. And uh, Mike, I appreciate that. So, you know, uh, guys, it's, it's, we got a great staff. And Mr. Suggs, it's quite evident that you, you put together a great team and you're a great leader for that team. So I appreciate that. And Mr. Chairman, that will be the end of my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Commissioner Turner? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was gonna also comment on the fire station, but I think you had it covered. So that'll be uh, every time I comment on something after another commissioner, my uh, purchasing warden out there gets on my ass. So I'm gonna try to stay off of that today. Yeah, purchasing warden, that's right. Is that what you call it? <laughs> um, also would like to say that we're making some fine strides at the landfill. It looks like we've got a deal we've been working on for a year. Uh, have they inked the contract yet or is it just back to them for it? Uh, no, sir, we have not received it back yet, but I don't anticipate any issues. Uh, you know, famous last words, but I believe that's a, uh, a great hopefully opportunity. Hopefully we'll have better news at the commission meeting in two weeks and we can talk about the actual good news on the budget for the fire station and the good news for the landfill. Hopefully we're, we will get there within two weeks. Um, uh, Terry, do you have any uh, upgrades on the diocese upgrades that we've requested? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that. I was talking with uh, Mr. Sender this morning, and uh, so we're working on putting a, a project scope together for the things that we need to upgrade in here, not just at the diocese, but there's a couple other issues that 
uh, uh, Bob is wanting to uh, incorporate into the, into the project, and then we'll look at the funding mechanism. Don't make that. air conditioner run colder, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're going to cut a vent in. Sorry, under your... that's an inside joke. I like it cooler than everybody. Yeah, else we're, we're 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 looking to cut a personal <laughs> vent in for you, but other than that, we're good. <laughs> I'm going to move over here. Then. <laughs> um, where are we at on our comp plan RFP for a contractor to come in and help us rewrite the comp plan? Uh, as, as we stated last Tuesday at the workshop, it's out on the street. There's a 21-day window. Done yet. It's not done yet. Once we receive the bids back in, then we'll go through the process of uh, reviewing, evaluating, and ranking for, for uh, board Julie, approval. do you know when that bid's up, when that RFP is up? Thursday. Thursday? Okay, there you go. Th thank you. Well, I knew she'd know. Uh, <laughs> She's the uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, request that uh, a meeting um, to start working on. If the, and I, the reason I'm bringing this up today is I want the commissioners. I'm gonna ask the commissioners to do on that East Palaka appropriation, like they did on the landfill, and like they did on the fire station. I would like them to give me the authority to go meet with press and hammer out the details between now and when that $500,000 appropriation comes where we can hit the ground running whenever it does get here. If y'all would give me that authority. Okay. If, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I piggyback on that just a little bit for Commissioner Turner. The more we do now, uh, up front getting ready because uh, the appropriation will be uh, uh, will be funded as of July 1 but then there's the agreements that have to be processed and the work scope has to be developed so anything we can start moving forward on now getting ready for that will benefit us because we'll have a, a, a much shorter window this <coughs> time of getting the project completed and we don't want to miss that opportunity Mr. Okay. Chairman. Okay. Commissioner Harvey. I think that's more than appropriate to give the district commissioner that's worked hard on that area the authority to do that and the scope of work defined, so I, I have no problem with that. Okay, I'm good with that also. Motion on this? Just consensus? I think on the public <coughs> meeting, y'all can just wave your hand. Wave 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 wave. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sarah, did you get that? We all waved in support. Okay, by consensus. Um, and I think that, uh, I think that finished me up. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Turner. Just a couple of comments. Uh, first, I'd like to um, mention that the Crescent City Rotary Club did have our installation banquet last uh, last <coughs> week, and I appreciate uh, Commissioner Rawls and his lovely wife Dawn and Liam attending, and also Commissioner Harvey. Um, and they are a tremendous help with uh, both our fundraisers, uh, The uh, all commissioners are, uh, with the Swine and Wine and the uh, Catfish Festival. And I want to thank Mary Ann. I recognize Mary Ann Braddock is back there. Uh, who attended today and was recognized um, with the Rotary Club and the county for our participation in rural days. And Marianne, thank you so much for what you do uh, for Putnam County and, and Crescent City. And uh, the Braddock and the Pickens family goes way back. Um, her dad was just a little bit older than my grandfather, probably in between my grandfather and my dad. When my dad was the president of the Rotary Club in 61 and 62. Her father was, I believe, his treasurer or secretary. So that's how far we go back. And um, so anyway, thank you, Marianne, for coming. And I'd like to, again, recognize Chris Doolin for everything that you do um, for our county and all rural counties with the Small County Coalition. And, um, and Chris really saved us because when you plan, as I mentioned before, and we'll get off rural days, we won't mention it anymore until we're about to do it again, is when you plan to cook 600 dinners, you have 600 plates. So we ran out and uh, Chris saved us uh, and got us 350 more. And um, anyway, so we appreciate it, Chris, and thank you for coming all the way from Tallahassee. Okay, any further business to come before this board? We stand adjourned. <clears throat>